What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the vlog. There's quite a few things to update you guys on since it's been a few weeks since you last heard from me. I hope you've all been doing good and we're gonna jump into some poker hands pretty quick here, but number one, this month I moved into a new place, so that's the main reason why I've been so busy. And secondly, which is definitely gonna be more interesting to you guys, upon returning to the Morongo Poker Room when it reopened a few weeks back, there was a pleasant surprise waiting and that was a 5-10 no limit game which they previously were not spreading. On top of that, the game often runs with a straddle, so it's pretty much a 5-10-20 if the players in there are all willing, which like I said, most of the time they are. As you guys can probably guess, that's a pretty big game for me and it's something I've been focusing on a lot over the past few weeks. As a result, I've been skewing my efforts more towards poker and doing well in that game as opposed to filming and taking notes and editing. Sometimes I'm really into the vlog and I just wanna put one out every few days. Other times I wanna focus more on actually trying to win money at this silly card game. And that's the direction I've been going the past couple weeks. However, I'm starting to go back to the vlog material that you guys all know and love. It may pause for a little bit, but the show must go on. And today that show is one of those sessions, 5, 10, 20, no limit from Morongo. Some of you may or may not know this, but that's actually my favorite place to play, especially now that they have this bigger game. And ever since they reopened, I've had a ton of fun. So. For anyone out there who hasn't yet tried it, I highly recommend coming out to Morongo and playing a session. Chances are you'll probably run into me there if you go on the weekends. Anyway, all that stuff being said, enough of the talking, let's jump into some poker. Alright guys, we are back at it here with some poker hands and we're going to start things off with a very good looking set of cards. Pocket queens in the big blind. Remember we're playing 5, 10, 20. So when the small blind limps in, I raise it up to $80. The straddler makes the fold and the small blind makes the call. So heads up here to a flop of jack eight four with two diamonds. My opponent checks it, so I make it $55 and my opponent makes the call. The turn card's a six of diamonds, and even though at first glance it looks like a not great card, in reality I really don't think it's that bad. Against such small sizing on the flop, my opponent is gonna be peeling with all kinds of stuff, so no reason to assign him a flush right away. He checks it, and I think I wanna keep betting for value here. It would suck to get check raised, but there's gonna be so many hands that pick up equity on this turn, like a pair in a straight draw or a pair in a flush draw, etc. So I put in a bet of $170 and my opponent makes the fold. A few hands later, the under the gun player limps in and I look down at ace deuce suited from late position. I decide to raise it to $80. The small blind makes the call and the limper makes the call. So we're gonna go three ways here to a flop of queen three deuce with two clubs and one heart. When the action checks to me, I think you can totally make a case for betting, but against two people and a small blind opponent who hates folding, I decided to just check it back and see what happens on the turn. Upon seeing the turn card though, I wish I opted for a bet because it's the ace of spades, so we turn two pairs. I think I'll be getting called pretty light here if I put out a bet because both of my opponents know that I'll either be using this card as a scared card to bluff on, or I might actually have an ace. So I put in a bet of $200, betting around two thirds of the pot. Unfortunately, it looks like no one really had much of anything because they both let it go. So not a whole lot of action here in the early going, but certainly nice to make hands right off the bat. At this point, I'm taking notes on those two hands that you guys just watched when, of course, I get involved in a really big pot and did not have the opportunity to film it. So you guys are just gonna have to take my word for it. In this one, it folds all the way to me in the small blind. And remember, because we're playing with three blinds, there's not gonna be any chopping going on. So when I look down at King Queen, I put in a raise to $80. The big blind folds and the straddler defends. So just the two of us going to a flop here of King 8-3 with a couple of hearts. 
This is the type of board where I think it's standard for the preflop raiser to continue betting. However, because my opponent in this hand is someone who likes to bet a lot when they sense a little bit of weakness, I decide to feed my opponent a little bit of rope with a check, and it seems to work because he puts in a bet of $95. I make the call and we're off to a very nice looking turn card, the Queen of Clubs, improving our hand drastically because now both of our cards match the cards on the board. I check it once again, this time my opponent bets $165. And I'm gonna put in a check raise here. This is a spot where I won't be bluffing too often, especially given that I check the flop and then check raise the turn. It's just a play that is more often than not gonna be a value hand, but against certain opponents, I think it's fine to deviate from what I would consider a balanced strategy. So I just make it $410 trying to build a pot and set up an all in by the river. It seems like it won't even come to a river play though because my opponent thinks for a little while and announces all in for another $1,200 over the 410 that I check raised to. Not much of a decision here at all. If we're coolered, it's all good. I'm happy to get it in with this exact holding. So we're off to a river card, which is the three of diamonds. My opponent gives it the head shake. So I just show it down and we scoop a really big pot. So things are going pretty swimmingly here and I hope to continue that streak when I look down at ace 10 from the small blind. There's an under the gun limper and I just complete the $20. The big blind calls and the straddle checks. So we're gonna go four ways to a flop here of jack 10 six with two diamonds. I check it and the action checks all the way around. Turn cards the four of diamonds and I think this is a spot where I can bet for a little bit of thin value. I feel like most of my opponents in this hand would have either bet top pair on the flop or flush draws for that matter. So if we can rule out a jack and flush draws, it seems like we'll have the best hand more often than not. Sometimes we'll be value owning ourselves, but I think that's fine. So I put in a bet of $60. The straddler makes the call and the under the gun player makes the call. A little concerning to get called in two spots here. But the river card comes and it's one that I think we can continue betting for value on. It's a jack of hearts, which shouldn't really change anything really. If anyone had a jack, like I said, I think they'd bet it on the flop. Sometimes maybe not. It seems a little unlikely and even less likely when another jack rolls off. Into two opponents, I don't know if I love this play looking back at it, but in the moment it just felt like I had the best hand most of the time. And anytime I think I have the best hand, even though I'm not sure, I'm gonna go for that value. So I bet $165. The player in the straddle thinks for a really long time and eventually makes the call and the next player to act folds. I show down ace 10 and instantly feel like an idiot when my opponent shows me queen jack off suit. Sometimes it's hard to draw the line between thin value and just a stupid bet. Uh, if you guys know where that line is, please let me know because apparently I don't really have any idea. And the next one, there's an under the gun limper and we finally look down at a much less complicated hand to play. Pocket Kings in late position. I raise it up to $80 and we get some very good news from the player on my left when he announces all in for $735. So a pretty massive raise here. Not too surprising though, because this player in particular had been splashing around quite a bit. So this was not out of character whatsoever. When the action folds back to me, I'm very happy to make the call here and even more happy to hear that we're up against Ace-9 offsuit. <laughs> You just got kings, huh, Mariano? Yeah. All right, so things are getting a little rough, but it's all good. We're gonna keep it going. And what better hand to do that with than pocket threes? In this next one, we're playing 5, 10, 20, 40. That's right, four blinds. Technically the fourth one's not a blind though. Same player that just had ace nine. Like I said, he was a ton of action and he puts in the blind raise to $40. The big blind completes and I have a decision here with pocket threes in the straddle. I could either call and just close the action or try to isolate this player in the big blind who limped into the 40 and at the same time knock out whatever hand the player on my left has since like I said, he raised the blind so it's really just any two cards. I decide to opt for the more aggressive route and raise it up to $120. Hopefully the player on my left folds and we can either just take it down right now or go heads up against the big blind. However, that's not what ends up happening when he looks down at whatever junk he's got and makes the call and the big blind makes the call as well. So all of a sudden we're playing this bloated pot in between two players 
And that's kind of the downside of raising with small pocket pairs, but alas, here we are. Flop comes down ace-jack-4 rainbow. All things considered, this is not really the worst flop ever because we're gonna have so many strong hands on this exact board texture. When the action checks to me, I think both my opponents in this hand will get the impression that I'm checking top pair for pot control slash deception. So if we wanna start bluffing, I think it's totally fine to start doing it on the turn, and that is what I decide to do. When the turn comes, the queen of diamonds and the big blind checks it to me one more time. I put in a bet of $100 trying to make it look real value heavy. The player on my left folds, but unfortunately the big blind makes the call. That's fine with me though, because I don't get the impression he's too strong. Seeing as how he limped before the flop, check twice and didn't check raise here on the turn, just put in the smooth call. So I'm just gonna bomb the river and hope that he folds whatever hand he's got. It seems to me like he's gonna have king jack, queen 10, queen nine, hands of that nature, and it seems unlikely that any of those hands will hang on after a river bet. However, the river card is a little bit dicey. It's the jack of hearts. So now if my opponent does have an ace, he's not likely to fold since he's now playing the queen kicker on the board. And if he has a jack, obviously he just made trips. However, there's still so many hands that beat me that I would really like to fold out here, such as king-queen or queen-ten, like I said. And even an ace could potentially find a fold here if I bet big enough. So despite not really loving this card and not being a huge fan of bluffing on river board pairs, I decided to just go for it anyway. I put out a bet of $450 and my opponent takes no time at all before calling with jack five of diamonds pretty unfortunate river card but at the same time like i said totally one that i think we can give up on this bluff does not work out in the next hand the button just calls the 20 and i look down at queen jack of clubs in the small blind i raise it up to 90 dollars and get called by the straddler and the button so three ways out of position here to a flop of king seven deuce with one club on this board there's quite a lot of backdoor possibilities I decided to continue betting. No need to go too big just yet since the board is so dry. I put in a bet of $95. The straddler makes the call and the button folds. So heads up here to a pretty nice looking turn card, the three of clubs. So we now have a flush draw to go along with, actually doesn't go along with anything really. That's all we have. Having some river potential, but really no showdown value here with queen high. I decided to continue betting. I try to actually bet 350, but accidentally bet 250. Pretty embarrassing rookie mistake, but my opponent seems happy with that price because he makes the call once again. And I think I'm gonna have to give up on quite a few river cards. It seems unlikely my opponent will fold top pair if like the river's a low card, but it doesn't come to that because we get a very interesting river card. We don't make our flush, but it is a pretty good card nonetheless. The Ace of Diamonds. It seems to me like my opponent will almost never have an ace in his hand here and I will almost always either have an ace or better. So what does that mean? Well, there's a thousand in the pot and my opponent has a thousand dollars behind. I think you guys know where this is going. It would be pretty unfortunate if my opponent was trapping with a hand like two pairs or a set, but I had the feeling that he would raise those sort of hands on the turn given that there's a flush draw available. But because he just called, I think he's just got a king, so. Let's just hope he doesn't want to hang on for a third barrel. I'm all in, and my opponent does not seem happy. He starts counting out how much he's got, realizes it's around a pot-sized bet, and now we get to just wait and see what happens. And after a few minutes, he decides on a fold. A little bit of redemption for those pocket threes earlier. Moving on, I look down at King 10 of hearts from early position. I raise it up to $60, and the player on my left makes the call. Everyone else folds, so we're gonna go heads up to a flop of 10-9-4 with one heart. Again, one of those boards I think you can go either way on. This time I decide to check it. This was an action player who I felt would be betting quite a bit. This time though, he only puts in a $75 bet, and I actually got the feeling that he had something here. Not necessarily anything super strong, but it just didn't feel like a bluff, so I just decided to make the call. Turn card looks pretty good to me. It's the Queen of Hearts giving us an inside straight draw as well as a flush draw. I check it, and this time my opponent checks it back. Now I think he's got like either a nine or a 10. So when the river comes, the three of clubs, I think it's time to go for some thin value and try to get called by hands like 
9-8 suited or jack-10 or one of those type of hands. So I put in a bet of $95. No need to go too big here since I feel like he'll fold a lot of those if we size a little too big. Eventually he decides on a call. I show king-10 and we're good. My opponent flashes me the jack-10 of diamonds. Feels good to correctly assess this one and get a little extra value. As if this game wasn't action enough already, I forgot to mention we were doing $25 bomb pots every single time there was a new dealer, which is every 30 minutes. Up until now, I hadn't had anything playable in these bomb pots, but finally, after around four or five hours of playing, I look down at ace eight offsuit and the flop comes ace four three rainbow. So we flop top pair, but not really much else aside from that. Action checks to a middle position player who bets $40. I make the call in late position and the small blind makes the call as well. I'm not really sure if we have the best hand here. That's the thing about bomb pots is you're always just sort of scratching your head wondering. Unless you have the nuts, it's a little tricky at times. However, it always helps to turn top two pairs, so that's what I decided to do. Eight of hearts on the turn. Sadly, the action checks all the way to me this time, so it doesn't seem like anyone's too strong. However, there's no way I'm checking back here. We can still get a lot of value from some possible flush draws and obviously just other forms of top pair. So I put in a $100 bet. The small blind makes the call and the other player folds. So we're heads up here to a deuce of clubs on the river. Shouldn't really change anything. Obviously a five makes a straight, but it's hard for him to really have a five here given how the action has played out so far, even though it is a bomb pot. Just seems unlikely. So when he checks it to me, I'm gonna keep betting for value. Hopefully he doesn't attack the fact that I don't really have that many fives either. This would be a pretty cool spot to check raise as a bluff, but I don't expect that from this player. So I just put in a $250 bet. My opponent doesn't think too long before just making the fold. In the last hand we'll go over tonight, I re-raise a player pre-flop with ace, king of diamonds, and he decides to move all in with pocket nines. And here you guys go, a classic coin flip to end the night. Oh, <laughs> that's not looking good. That's man. not good. Oh no. It's very bad. Oh no. It's very bad. He wins. Okay. He wins, he wins, he wins, he wins. He, he, he said he wins. He's gonna win this part, right? I'm just kidding, dude. Yeah, so a pretty anticlimactic ending, but there you guys have it. After playing for about six or seven hours, I decided to rack things up and head to the cage. Hope you guys enjoyed the hands. So that's going to be a wrap for today's session. Certainly not my most impressive result. I'll continue to vlog this game on occasion and hopefully capture one of those very action-packed sessions for you guys pretty soon. I'm a lot more comfortable just playing 510 or even 51020 now. So I'm going to be going to the bike this Thursday and jumping into that 510 game and making a vlog out of it. If you guys happen to be at the bicycle casino this Thursday, keep an eye out if you want to come say what's up or even jump in the same game. And also Agua Caliente, I heard, is reopening their poker room in a few days. So I'm going to go try to play over there. Hopefully they get a 3-5 game going, which I believe is their biggest game. Furthermore, there is a possibility that I'll be visiting Vegas for a couple of nights in early November with a couple of buddies of mine strictly for poker and vlogging. So again, if you guys are interested in that, follow me on Instagram where I post updates about my sessions and where I'm going and stuff. All right, that's gonna be a wrap for today, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you gave this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And like I said, if you're interested in some upcoming 510 sessions, make sure to hit subscribe if you haven't. And that's it for today. Good luck at the tables and I'll see you all next time. Peace.